Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. And today we will try to understand why GC liners has a hole. So you must have seen different types of liners ranging from a straight liner, a liners with taper like in this example, there are tapers at the two sides. One is at bottom and the top. So it's a double taper liner. There are some liners which has the hole also. So you can see in the figure over here, there is a hole at the bottom, there is a hole at the top and the, another type of liner can be a cyclo liner. So in this particular video, we will try to understand, you know, what is the reason of uh, having a hole to a liner? Before we go to the exact topic of discussion, let us first try to understand what are the different types of injections in the gas chromatography. The first type of uh, injection is a splitlet injection and I'm sure you must have heard about that. So when the splitlet injection can be used, it is generally used in case of having a high analyte concentration present into a sample and then there is no need of low detection. You can see in the diagram that when the sample along with the carrier gas goes into a column based on to the ratio selected of the split, the sample go out into the split vent. Isn't it? So the part of the sample is laid out through the split vent with a high flow rate. So the split injection has a high flow rate. The second type of injection is the splitlet injection. Now in case of splitlet injection, uh, it is generally used in case if you have the trace level analysis requirement, your sample concentration is low. Preferably use of deactivated liner will improve the analytical performance. In case of splitless injections, your sample is going to get in contact with the, the bottom seal. You can see in the diagram. And also once the splitlet injection gets completed, the split vent gets opened up and whatever vapors of the solvent is present into the liner gets vent out through the split vent. The third type of injection technique is the direct injection. So direct injection is used for trace level determinations. When the concentration of analyte into the sample is very low, you can certainly prefer the direct injection. If there is a possibility of a degradation of active sample components, see in case of splitless injection mode, which is also preferred in case of a trace level determinations. But what is the disadvantage of the splitless mode? your sample comes in the contact with the injector port body. And if the body parts are reactive in the nature, sometimes your sample component may get absorbed onto the injector port body and you may have the inaccurate uh, analysis. So if there is a possibility of a degradation or absorption, if there is a recovery issue, you can certainly go with the direct injection. The sample is injected directly into a hot inlet to allow the vaporized sample to transfer into the GC column. So once the sample gets injected into the injector port because of the high temperature, your sample anyway is going to get vaporized. This entire sample vapors are now then going to get transferred into the GC column. If you look into the particular diagram over here on the right side, you will see that this liner is a taper liner. Taper means what? There is a cone and the another end of the liner is very narrow and this particular end actually fits into the column and that creates the leak free contact. That creates the leak free contact. And because of this leak free contact, whatever vapors are present into the inlet liner will never get outside it. You must have seen in case of split or splitless mode, there is a possibility or a provision for the coming out of these vaporized samples. But in case of this direct injection, this vaporized sample will never come out of the injector port. Now such a liners have a hole drilled either at the bottom or top. Why? Now this is the point we are going to talk today. In this particular diagram, I have not uh, shown this hole onto the liner. And I wanted to explain why there is a need of the hole on uh, liner in a direct injection mode. So why do inlet liners for direct injection need a hole? 
Direct injection use large injections and need an electronic pressure control. See, we talked about the primary reason for using the direct injection. And we understand that the direct injection is used in case of trace level component analysis. Now there is a low concentration, so especially you have to go with the higher injection volume like 4 microliter or 5 microliter. So in such a situation, this EPC is used. Let us first discuss the EPC and then we'll talk about this uh, hole onto the inlet line. To compress the sample vapor cloud when making large injection, some GC offers electronic pressure control. Let us understand this particular uh, sentence. To compress the sample vapor cloud when making a large injection. So in case of direct injection or splitlet injection, your inlet flow is very, very low because there is an absence of split. If there is a split injection mode, your inlet flow is going to be very high. But in case if there is no split injection, like in case of splitless injection or in case of direct injection, your inlet gas flow is going to be very low. Now in case if your inlet gas flow is low, it is also going to take long amount of time for transfer of this entire vaporized sample inside the injector port to the inlet of the column. And again, during this process, your vaporized cloud will have the bigger band width. It gets enhanced. And it, let us assume that, just imagine, if your analyte bandwidth gets increased, what is the impact of that increased bandwidth? Hmm? You are certainly going to have the peak distortion or you can expect that the peak width at the base is going to get high. Because of that, the resolution also can get compromised. So the elongated band is not a good sign for good chromatography. Now, is there any another way to compress this uh, vaporized cloud? And that's where this EPC modes comes into the play. So what happens once you inject the sample solution goes into the vaporization mode. Let us say your flow is only 8 PSI. But for a certain amount of time, your flow get increased. This is only during the injection, right? During the injection only, not throughout the chromatography. Let us say you increase the flow rate to 23 PSI. Now this sudden increase in the flow rate is going to help you to compress your sample band. And that is what is the actually drawback of this direct injection. Just by inject, but just by using the higher flow rate during the injection, we will be able to compress this sample band into a thin cloud. And once that thin sample band goes transport onto the column, you can get the sharp peaks your tailing can get minimized, your resolution can get improved. And this is called as the electronic pressure control. It requires actually control of the pressure in the upstream of the injection port and also in the downstream of the injection port at the split vent. As a traditional direct injection liner seals to the analytical column, it completely seals the analytic column, isn't it? You can see in the diagram. There is no downstream flow to the split vent. I mean, the split vent is not possible. Why? Because no sample vapor can come out of the inlet liner as your inlet liner is actually making a leak-free connection with the GC column. So there will be a difference in the pressure that is measured between the two, tens, two sensors when setting up the direct injection. Upstream and the downstream sensors will get disturbed. The upstream sensor will overcompensate for the difference and a high pressure malfunction will result. Now to prevent this problem, a small hole in the liner allows a portion of the carrier gas to escape from the liner and equalize the pressure at the second sensor, thereby eliminating pressure malfunctions. Now you can see a second diagram at the bottom, there is a small hole in the liner. So this small holes allows 
the portion of the carrier gas along with the sample to escape from the liner and equalize the pressure at the second sensor thereby eliminating the pressure malfunction. So the conclusion. Systems equipped with electronic pressure control or EPC require a hole in the inlet liner body to maintain the system gas flow especially in case if you are using the direct injection. An inlet liner with a hole at the top of the liner improves analysis where compounds of interest elute away from the solvent peak. The peak tail from the solvent remain in liner between the hole in liner and the column end. You can see a chromatogram for your understanding. Also this uh, liner with the top hole is also preferable for the samples containing aqueous diluent. An inlet liner that has a hole near the bottom is best suited where a tailing solvent peak could affect early littering compound or when the solute is similar to that of your solvent. So if there is a poor resolution between your solvent and your analyte because of the high tailed solvent, your analyte may get the poor resolution. Now to avoid that, you can certainly use a liner with a hole at the bottom and you will get the improved resolution. Additionally, the hole in the side of the liner allows the injector to be operated in traditional split or splitless mode also. Because this hole also helps in creating the uh, split vent flow and that allows the usage of liner both in split and splitless. Thank you so much for your attention and let me also know what is your thought on this particular topic.